Perfect. Okay, now we are recording officially. Okay, so I just spilled the beans about Trisha, but I'm going to do it again. And we just found out that Melissa is also in this test group. I just, before the recording started, talked about the importance of a test group, how in, in, incredible it is. It's such an opportunity for your business. And so if you are past the point of being able to be a success starter, don't worry about it because you can still get the nod to be in a test group. And it's very important that you're sharing that with your corporate mentor that gets assigned to you once you become diamond. So that's another um, incentive to go diamond for sure. All right, so we've had a lot of new coaches on the team, and I don't know if any of them are on um, today, um, but we just pulled these. These are some of the new coaches that had recently been announced in Faithfully Fit um, community, and even more than having brand new coaches, we've had a lot of rank advancements. So you've probably seen some of these, but I thought it was um, only, only setting to congratulate Claire and to congratulate uh, Rain, who both made the decision to go Emerald recently, as well as Cecilia and Christina, both who are on this call. So awesome job to you guys. You guys did it so quick. You made a decision. You did it. That is the first thing that gives you momentum in your business because now you're eligible for team cycle bonus. So awesome job. Um, Sarah uh, hit diamond for the first time within the last 30 days, which is amazing. She's been working so hard toward that. Uh, Brandy reclaimed her diamond status recently. So did, um, so did Kira, um, who's not on this call, and Samantha is also a brand new diamond, hit it for the first time three weeks ago. So not only is she a success starter and she was able to hit success club, but she's continuing to hit success club and also locked in diamond in a very short time in her career, which is amazing. Um, Amanda is back at Diamond. She's got some really great momentum on her business. She's had a lot of um, new women in the new coach workshop. So it's been exciting to get to know women on her team. Um, and then we also have um, Alicia and her team who are four star qualifying, which is awesome. So, so, so awesome. And I don't know why Melissa Schaefer's not in here, but she's a brand new Diamond as well. She should have been listed on here, but we pulled these images from Faithfully Fit Community. So we could have we could have missed that one. So Melissa, when you watch the recording, amazing. Melissa did it in record time. She made a decision to be diamond and did it within like six or seven weeks, something like that. So incredible job to her. And it's no wonder that she um, is part of Alicia's team. So they've got three more weeks to officially become four star. And so for those of you that are new, once you hit diamond, that's it. Like your diamond for a lifetime. We call it your lifetime rank is diamond. But when you're going for star diamond, one star, two star, three star, four star, the day that you become a four star, it's only called qualifying because now you have to hold it for six consecutive weeks. So it's a very nail biting, stressful time. Um, but also it's, it's, it's a good um, season for you as a coach to learn how to go through a qualifying period because it hones your leadership skills for sure. So um, Alicia's team is growing. Um, no doubt they're going to be five star qualifying soon because there's some girls that are moving and shaking on her team so awesome and then I couldn't not mention all of these fantastic people on Faithfully Fit um, we're in the middle of our third week of qualifying for 10 star and I just have to name them all because Kira and Pam and Juliet and Alicia and Heidi and Amanda and my husband and two of my business centers and Samantha who are all linked to my first business center are just it's such a united team and it's been really really awesome to go for this goal so you guys are amazing um congratulations to all of you guys um alicia did i miss any other recognition besides melissa you did not but i um we need to give you like a more formal shout out than like oh my team's so great like you oh. are our fearless leader um and none of us would be in this business if it weren't for you our lives wouldn't be changed the way they have the ripple effect on our customers and everyone on our teams no matter what their tenure is or what their role like come on you're amazing um, and you're also in a 10 star qualification we're looking good for week three but we that's halfway right. so same thing right this is very much a team effort and tracy will be the first one to tell you but none of it would be possible if we didn't have a leader like her at the, at the front. So thank you for the opportunity you've given us. And I always think about that when I'm asking people to be coaches, I'm yes. like, what if Tracy hadn't asked me, yeah. right? So yes. Um, yes. think it. about that. 
So true. And it's really cool because you guys, as you start to grow your own teams, it's really awesome to see Amanda Musser have a team call and for Juliet's team to have a team call and for, you know, just brand, like newer coaches, like Samantha's like, I think I might be getting ready to have team calls. There's nothing more exciting for me and eventually for you guys to see your team start to have team calls and to be able to grow and to just share the opportunity and bless other people with it. So amazing. Awesome job. Okay. So I'm almost done with recognition, but I want to make sure that we highlight some of these awesome women. I love these images that come in, you guys. Um, I love the fact that someone like Suzanne, who um, just started coaching is at Success Club 10. She's homeschooling three kids and her husband's on the road all the time. I can say something amazing about every single face on here where, you know, Angela is doing it from Brooklyn and Story is Brandy's sister, but Brandy hit Success Club and then she had her sister's account hit Success Club, which is basically like a secondary account for Brandy. And I think that's really amazing that um, Brandy decided to, um, you know, just go for it with both and to be able to receive leads on both her sister's account and her account, which is going to get her in front of more people. And Deanna and Veronica, who just, just went back to work after maternity leave. And here she's got, you know, all these babies at home and she's not making excuses. I, I could go on and on about all of the faces on here, but it's just really cool to see so many of you guys making a move and really helping people, but doing it with the mindset that you really have value. That's when it clicks. Like when you have the mindset that you're not selling something and you've got value to offer somebody, it's pretty incredible. So volume, new coaches added. It's just been really awesome to see so many of you take this MBF launch and really propel your businesses. And what I love about Beachbody is that they give us so many opportunities to launch stuff, bevy teas, um, the mixed berry energize. We've got pumpkin spice shakeology coming up. We've got mocha mint shakeology coming up. We've got 30 day breakaway. We've got one of autumn's programs coming up nine week control freak in December. Launches are amazing and you get better at them every single time you launch. I track my launches. That's a little bit more, more complex for this call, but I track my launches so that as a business owner, I can see what is my percentage growth with every single launch. And I, I try to learn from each launch so that I'm really able to make the next launch even bigger and better. And so the more you practice launches and get better at them, the more that it's going to impact you and your team and ultimately um, your income as well. So we're going to get right into 30 day breakaway for sure, but I definitely wanted to take that first 15 minutes and recognize you guys. Um, what we're going to do tonight, so not every detail is known about this program, even though Samantha, who's got like the real fancy earrings and the awesome lipstick because she's presenting. Um, so she's going to give us as much as she knows. And then what I'm going to do is after she goes through all the details about the program, I'm going to walk you through post examples, breadcrumbing examples, and dates that I have written down to prepare myself for my own launch you guys can copy them. You guys cannot copy them. This is just sort of what I do. And I'm going to continue to share it um, as it gets closer. Cause a lot of times I'll kind of switch my strategy and launches as I'm in the middle of doing a launch. Um, but without further ado, I've already spoken the world about her. I love Samantha. I've never met her in the flesh, believe it or not. Um, she is somebody that I met on Instagram. We started talking on Instagram. We started connecting over some things that we both, um, resonated with. And, uh, we talked on a zoom one day and that night she signed up to be a coach and she has never looked back. And so it's really cool to hand this call over to her. I'm super proud of this moment for her being able to do this and share with you guys what she, um, is learning and taking away from this program. So Samantha floor is yours, girl. Oh, thank you. Way to make me blush. Oh my goodness. Um, do you want to pull up the slides though? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm so excited in general. And so I'll probably have some nervous energy here. So just bear with me as I talk through all the fun stuff. Um, so, so far the test group is going very well. I won't lie. It's a little overwhelming at times because there's so many 
um, people in the groups that is like notification, notification, notification. So um, aside from that, it's really cool. Um, the Dallas is the um, trainer in this program and she's freaking sweet. Should I put uh, a picture of her really quick so everyone knows who she yeah. is? Yeah. So we're going to go. Go, go off cue for a little bit. And Tracy T is not working today. So you're not going to get pretty pictures. You're going to get, this is why Tracy Baldrack has an admin. Um, Dallas, you guys, definitely there she is on the right. IV Fitness. You all should be following her on Instagram. Everything she's talking about. And you also should be following the hashtag 30 day breakaway. They're both right there for you. Okay, there you go. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, will you go back to the yeah. second slide? Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to give you some quick snippets about the program, and then I figure opening it up to questions and answers is easiest. Um, so in general, the program is going to be a total of four weeks, 30 days. Your end goal of the program is to ideally be running a 5K with your team. Um, now, obviously, it's not like everyone gets on a Zoom and then goes running together, but if somehow that's possible, then count me in. Um, but you're going to go on a 5K run virtual, and then you share about it and post it. That hasn't happened yet in the test group as we are on week two. Um, the program is really great for both beginner and advanced runners. That said, for those of you who are already training for half marathons and have run marathons like Rhonda, um, the goal for you guys is very much more to focus on beating your own personal record. And what I didn't realize about this program when I was first chosen to do it is that it's also a strength training program, which I think is very, very unique. And so, um, and the running isn't also just like boring, not boring, but like typical, like, oh, I'm just going to jog at my own pace. Like she does different types of training. So it's, there's interval runs, there's tempo runs, there's sprints and walks and stuff. So it's very much changing and it keeps you on your toes. Um, but things that you'll need, things that she focuses on a lot of with the strength training too, is building that muscle endurance so that when you are going on a run, your ankles are strong enough to keep um, going and your knees are strong enough because it is a high impact um, sport. I guess is the best way to do it. You'll need light, medium, and heavy dumbbells. Um, she's never gonna tell you exactly how many weights to lift or whatnot. She's very, that's not her style. She's very much more like pick what you can do and um, challenge yourself, but don't overdo it, focus on form. So she will do that a lot in her groups. And then resistant loops are necessary too. What's also really unique and cool about this program, in my opinion, is that there's a lot of functional training in this and foam rolling, which I hadn't, really known much about functional training until honestly quite recently and I think Megan Davies talks about it a little bit in MVF on her stretch days and whatnot but it's really making sure your muscles are stretched out are taken care of because if they're not injuries end up happening and your range of motion stops so um, a lot of the trainings that she's doing is focusing on making sure you have the right posture because you want to be able to lean a little bit forward when you're running and random stuff like that. Um, so you'll need a foam roller, and that hurts, but it feels great. <laughs> um, and then goodies that you can expect to receive if you buy this program and it comes out is you'll get a 5K medal at the end of it, and then you'll also get like the running belt phantom, fanny pack thingamabob jig. I didn't really know what the actual term is. That isn't out yet, but it looks pretty cool. Um, just like with MBF, you're gonna get access to both of the nutrition programs for the challenge and completion packs. Um, I have a feeling that's how they're leaning towards as a company, but I don't know that for a fact. And it, this program's really unique because it's in both English and Spanish. And what's really, really cool is that Dallas, she literally does, when she's been filming it, she does one workout in English and then right after she does it in Spanish. And she's doing the moves every single one right up along. And her runs are outdoors um, and whatnot. Next slide. All right, let's stop for questions really quick. Does anybody have any questions so far? <clears throat> I'm gonna stop share because it's easier for Samantha to see you guys. Uh, I have a question. question. 
<laughs> Sorry, I have a quick question. How long are the actual workouts that she's doing prior to the running? Great question. That's one of the things I'm going to be talking about in the next slide. Which is, wait a second. Okay, cool. Yeah, what else? Okay. I had the same question, so we're, we're all eager. Um, I have, oh, sorry. The, oh, sorry. No, everybody's like, how long do I have to run? That's what they really want to know. <laughs> the oh, I was wondering how long the videos are, the, the strength training workouts. So is that overall, what you're going to talk about? Yep, that will be all on the next. All right, so let's go to the next slide and then we can do FAQs. How about that? Perfect. Okay, cool. So how long are these workouts? <laughs> um, if so she has two different calendars that you can be following for the most part. You have the regular, which is the preferred version. And if you follow the regular calendar, you're expecting probably a 20 minute strength training program, followed by more or less a 20 and an additional 10-ish minutes of cool downs. So one of the things that has been challenging, I would say so far, is that this is a longer program if you're following the preferred calendar method. So you can expect your workouts to be about 40 plus, 50 plus an hour long. Um, that said, obviously not everyone can do that in the same time. So what she recommends is if you're gonna break it up and you're still doing the regular calendar, so to speak, do the strength training first, ideally. Um, like let's say you do it in the morning and then go in your run in the evening. If you have to change it up and do the run in the morning and the strength training in the evening, that's fine. She does have like a warm up for your run 10 minute video before if you have to do that. If you go straight from your um, strength training workout, you're getting warmed up for the run automatically. Um, the second calendar that she does is called the time crunch calendar. Um, and how that is broken up is that you're either doing your strength training workout one day, and then the next day you're doing the run workout. So it's not the same every single day and it's broken up. So it depends on where people are at, what they can handle. Um, if you are pregnant, she's recommending doing the time crunch workout so that you're not putting your body into overdrive. Um, but you can expect if you're doing the preferred regular calendar four to five strength training workouts per week. That includes a total body, an upper, a lower, and a core workout. Um, and then you can expect anywhere, like last week, the first week we did three runs, this week there's four. Um, and I think the other upcoming weeks there's four. And then there are two rest days each week. One of them is a foam roll active rest day and then one's completely off too. So some people are breaking it up based on their calendars, but she does put a lot of emphasis on if you can follow the program exactly how it's set, that is preferred because that's what is gonna get you the most results and bang for your buck. Um, additionally, what I thought was really, really cool is that there's gonna be five prep runs, so to speak. So um, just like with 80 Day Obsession, how there are like this a week of prep, there will be a week of prep runs too. And then she also has warm up and cool downs. Um, the cool down videos, at least at this point, aren't included in the runs. So I've been having to go to a separate link to still do that, but she recommends you still do that every after every single run. So that's an additional 10 minutes. The warm ups only if you're not doing your strength training right away. Then, Lastly, she also has a rainy day cardio, which I'm doing, I believe, tomorrow, so that if it is raining one day, you have an option for some cardio inside. Now, questions. <laughs> I have a bunch of questions. Hit me. It's Elise. <laughs> so I yeah, typed yeah. one in. I'm one, so one question is, I'm wondering if she accounts or if she's talked about people that want to run on a treadmill instead of running outside. Great question. Yes. So they have both of that. So they do, she has videos that will be on the app that if you're doing it on a treadmill, you can just watch those. And then she has just the audio download right now that I've been going and taking the runs outside, but either way is fine. And then is it the sort of thing, like, I don't know if you've done Peloton run, but I'm assuming it's very similar where she's in your earbud and she's saying, okay, the next 30 seconds, we're going to run fast. And then you bring it back and then you can walk or jog. Is it, can you tell us a little bit about what she's saying to you? 
totally. So I haven't done the Peloton runs, but it's very similar to that. Yeah. So she'll be like, okay, you're going to run an interval run for the next two minutes. You're going to be at your RPE, which is like your rate of breathing. There's a scale of one to 10, um, of five. And then we're going to do a 30 second cool down. And we're going to pick it back up and go up to six and then pick it back down and whatnot. Um, the challenging thing though that I'm finding just so you guys know is that the audio with it, like if you're a runner and you like to listen to music, um, it's a little more challenging that way, but they are working on that in post-production. So there's no music right now? Right now they have some, they have music in just the audio clips, but not the videos. Um, but it's also like music that's no, words so it's just like a good beat which is always good too but i don't know i like a good book jam i'm sure yeah, there's I a had similar question. i'm sorry i had a, a very similar question to what elise asked because um i see a lot of people doing um the couch to 5k and I'm just trying to understand like how this is different. Like, uh, like so it sounds like you have the audio that you're taking with you. Um, I think couch to 5K takes longer than 30 days. <laughs> so I heard some of that you're breaking up with your mom. Get off. But, um, but I think somebody just signed on. I don't know. Hey, guys, if you could please mute yourself if you're not talking, someone just popped on and it's really loud. Pam, Pam Pritchard, mute yourself, girl. Totally out of okay, I did it for her. Okay, that's better. So can I just, uh, I, I think, I don't know if Amanda's um, Wi Fi or something was going on. But couch potato to 5K is how I got into running, and it sounds very similar. So if anyone knows that, Yvette, you're doing that right now, right? It's like run for 30 seconds, and then it'll say go. Weird music, kind of to the beat. Now yeah. walk for two minutes. Like it's very instructional, but I think people that are looking to get into running need that, like more than yes. you, you know? So. Yeah, I would say, so I don't know what the couch to running thing my Bob is, but um, I would say that sounds very much like it. I think what's different though, is she's still very much still talking in your ear and she's really talking to you about different breathing strategies and talking about also like the different, like lean a little bit forward, really focusing on almost like how light are you on your feet? So it's giving you more tips that I think even advanced runners um, could benefit from if they've never been coached by an actual long distance runner. Um, and I would say it's, it's more than just like 30 seconds. Like I said, it's different intervals of just, it's not going from 30 seconds to 45 seconds from day to day. It's more like today we're doing a hit run tomorrow or in two days, we're going to focus on a tempo run. So you're going to stay at an RPE of five for three minutes instead of doing a 30 second sprint and then a minute recovery and then um, different things like that. So I do think if you've never run before though, it's still like, I hate running. I am not a runner whatsoever. I hate it. I think there's a mental willpower to it and I give mad props to everyone who does it, but it is hard. Um, but I am finding myself doing it and still pushing myself and getting through. And I think she helps you very much overcome those mental strategies and I think what I posted in my stories I think it was a couple days ago is like for me I don't expect a crazy physical transformation in this program even though that's still possible just because it is 30 days but with that said for me the transformation is definitely coming more from a mindset standpoint and I think you're going to see a lot of people focusing on that in this program over the typical physical weight stuff even though that's still a part of it. Yes. And you know what? That's what I want to talk about. Like, I want to get into some ideas for social media and you guys that are trying to attract leaders to your team or good challengers, anybody who loves fitness, either hates running, loves running, or they're sort of like eh, lukewarm about it. 
But if you are attracting people or wanting to attract people that want to elevate themselves and get better, anyone will tell you that running is a total mental game. So play that card in talking about it. Like I with Samantha, I detest running. I, I detest it. I force myself to do it sometimes because I think it's completely therapeutic, but that's going to be my story right? Brandy Truex, who like does races all the time, her story is going to be totally different. And we're all going to attract different people based on how we're sharing the fact that we're doing these programs. And for someone who is a coach and you consistently do and complete programs over and over again, this is also going to show your followers your level of commitment. Can I jump in real quick? Sure. Hi, Julia. Hi, I don't have my video on. I just wanted to say, and I know this is a little off topic, but Samantha, you did so well on that. Like, I don't like oh. running either. And I'm like psyched for it because that was like a great presentation. You were like such a leader that I'm like, I literally want to go run now, but I'm not going to, oh. but like Thanks. awesome job. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, and I actually have a question. Yes. Sure. Um, so I guess just for the structure for the English Spanish piece. So I know you were saying like they're recorded like back to back in different languages. So I'm assuming the way that it's laid out is like, there's two separate, like you basically pick, do I want to hear in English or I want to hear it in Spanish? Like it's separated, correct? Precisely. Okay. And then I could probably Google this and figure it out myself, but does she say where she's from? Like, I'm just like, and the reason why I'm asking this question is I do actually have people that I think would want to hear it in Spanish. And I feel like that's going to be their yeah. next question is like, what kind of Latina is she? So I'm curious. <laughs> no idea. That's a great question. But I was thinking about that at the earlier because she has the cutest accent that I'm like, Oh my God, you are such a freaking Latina babe. And yeah, she is. I was like, damn. Yes, I bet you can find that. And it's so funny that you brought that up, Lauren, because Callie had a friend over who's from Ecuador, and then my babysitter is here who's from Colombia. And there was a big discussion in my house how, like, they are not the same, right? Yes. So um, that's, a, that's a good question. I think they'll probably, the, um, for, like, 411, she'll definitely, 411 Team Beachbody, she's definitely going to be on the national wake-up call. There will definitely be in Beachbody Champions page, like, a get-to-know um a Dallas, like there'll be a whole thing on her, and you can probably find some things on her in the back yeah. already because it's I not. Just, I just googled it. She's from Puerto Rico. There we go. Amazing. Okay. No. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so yeah. Cool. We're Thank gonna, you. We're gonna break for a quick second to make sure that we have enough time to go through everything. But I, um, because. Christina Delgado did the national wake up call this week. She did such a good job. She's actually filming. Um, she's going to be one of the, like the virtual people like an MBF for Autumn's new program. And what launched her business, she had gained 20 pounds and she was chosen to be in the 80 day obsession test group three years ago. And if you listen to the national wake up call, she talks a little bit about it, but that is what completely revolutionized her business was that launch of 80 day and having a transformation. So I thought that it was, I, I wanted to go and see how she was starting to promote it so that I could share with you guys how um, she and some of the women on her team are promoting it. And I want to show you some images that might inspire you as you're thinking about how to breadcrumb. Um, so I'm going to show you the images first, and then I'm going to walk you through the calendar. Okay, but you can go find Christina Delgado on Instagram and read through some of these. Um, but she really talks about that there's somebody on her team that's in the 30 day breakaway program. And that right there is a breadcrumb, right? You guys should all be saying that you are on a team with someone who is in this test group. And there's a benefit to that because you being a teammate with Samantha are getting um, cutting edge information. Um, there's going to be a lot of excitement on our team because of Samantha and what she's doing. Um, and Christina talks about that as well. And again, Christina talks a lot about the mindset as well. She talks a lot about leadership and mindset. Um, she talks about how she hates running all kinds of good stuff, but she's been breadcrumbing for a while. So she obviously knew that this program was coming out. Christina Delgado was on um, the, uh, the, the like leader council for um, Team Beachbody for a long time. So I'm sure she knew it was coming out. And she has done a really good job since the beginning of the year, starting to already breadcrumb 
these, these running pictures. So she lives in Florida. Obviously there's already a beautiful backdrop, but these are just some ideas to give you guys on different things that you can start showing on your social media about running. Samantha did a really cute picture of her sneakers. Um, and Samantha's got some other ideas that we're going to go through as well. But I just wanted to give you guys some imagery that you could think through um, before we move on to Samantha's um, breadcrumbing idea slide. Um, let's talk dates really quick. Okay. So here's how I always do my launches. I start with the actual release date and then I roll backward. That's how I work. Okay. So August, October 5th, uh, 30 day breakaway releases to coaches and two weeks later on the 19th, it releases to customers. So we don't know what that looks like yet, right? Like there's obviously been a gap in, um, morning melt or and um sorry in mbf and mbfa there's like a two-week gap which like the girls who are running a challenge group with me we were all sort of like oh my gosh like we're not rolling right into mbfa so they might do the same where there's a gap and we sort of start over or they might just allow the coaches to continue continue to go through for 30 days we don't know that yet but we can adjust but i know that october 5th is my go live date which means if I'm going to work backward from that by September 25th, I want to have my final list ready of verbal commitments. Okay. When MBF released, I had my list ready in an Excel doc. And all I did the morning that it went live to coaches is I just, I can't see you guys because I'm sharing. I just started highlighting all of the names of people after I sent them their link. That's all I did, right? I think I added 13 people on my very first day. And I think with all my business units, I had way over 20 coaches with this launch because of how I breadcrumbed going forward. So if September 25th is sort of like my go hard date, then I work back from that. So if I want my list on who's going to be getting their link on the 5th, I will probably open up my challenge group the weekend of the 26th, 27th. And for a week straight, I probably will go live into like a store buying sneakers with my people. I will probably do some sort of like an interview if, if, you know, God willing, we can still go shopping with like the guy at New Balance talking about sneakers for my challengers. I will do stuff in my challenge group, you know, probably go to the grocery store and I will probably lay out all of the things that I'm going to be getting ready to eat to fuel my body. I probably will have my tub of recharge. Running makes me so sore. So it's not just recovery right afterwards. It's going to bed at night with my recharge in my body. So I wake up feeling refreshed. So I want a full week of all of my people before they buy their access. And a lot of times I'll use it like a sneak peek. So they may not have given me a verbal commitment, but I'm like, do you want to learn more about 30 day breakaway? Probably would open that group the week of the 25th. That way I can put people in there, add value, show them how I'm getting ready, create FOMO, links go live on October 5th. And then I'll probably put a post up in that group that's like, hey, shout out or ring the bell or do something once you have your access. And then you create FOMO in that group. And then I'll go live in that group and be like, okay, everybody that doesn't have access is going to get removed from this group on October 3rd or something like that. So October 20 or sorry, September 25th is really that date that I want to open up that group and have my, my final list ready of people who are excited about it. Which means if I'm working backward from that, I'm going to start my polls and my posts about running and posts about sneakers and shopping for sneakers and asking about 5Ks and asking about running tips on uh, this week, August 10th. I actually already started because I went for a run when I was on vacation a couple of times and I already started making a list of all of my people. I asked for like, Hey, if I wanted to run a 5k, what tips would you have for me? And I did it immediately after I did a run in Michigan. And so I already started my list. I got, I think nine people that responded to me. Those nine people are on my list, right? The next time I do a poll, it's going to be about, Hey, for you runners out there, what's your favorite shoe? Every single person that responds to my poll is going to go on my list. So my list just grows. Every single person that engages with anything that I'm talking about is going to go on my list on an Excel doc. So that then on September 7th, that's the Monday after I finish MBFA. So I know that starting this upcoming Monday, I have three weeks to get really good results from MBFA. 
right? I got great results from MBF. I'm, but I'm also, you guys, I'm, I'm eating the meal plan for MBF. I did nutrition. I did ultimate portion fix for MBFA. I'm starting to be mindset because I want my girls to see that I do both programs. I don't have to tell them which one I love most, but I will if they ask, but I want to sit, be able to be like, here's MBF. I got great results. I gained two pounds. I'm down a size. I went ultimate portion fix. Here's my MBFA results. And this is what happened when I did to be mindset because I knew that we were probably going to be doing both of the nutrition plans for the next program. So it goes back. I mean, we joke about it all the time, but like you guys need to finish MBFA like with a meal plan. Don't just go through the workouts and like eat pizzas on Fridays and like keep your fingers crossed that you're going to get good results. If you want your followers to be like, what are you doing? You've got to stick to the fitness and the nutrition and then show those pictures. So I'm going to show my pictures on September 7th after I finish MBFA. I'm going to show them I'm a product of the product. And that's going to elevate the excitement. I'm like, you know what? I'm pumped that I get to keep lifting weights. Look at what has happened to my body when I'm eating well and I'm building muscle. I get to keep on lifting and I get to lean out and try running little nervous, don't like running, but let's see, what are your tips? I'm going to keep asking for tips, but now I'm creating people being like, I want what she's having because of the results that I got from MBFA. So that's the week of September 7th. So now the week of September 7th and the 7th and the 14th, it's going to be everybody wanting to know what I did. What are you eating? What, what, what did you make? How did you do it? How did, you know, they're asking questions. I want to get results like that. So I'm going to be talking to them about how long it's taken. I'm going to be talking to them about my meal planning, about I'm already starting to breadcrumb some of my meal planning stuff. I'm trying to go live once a week about doing some meal planning. That's super simple because I just, with the four kids home all the time, I, I don't have as much time as I used to for, for prepping. So I'm going to do a lot of nutrition breadcrumbing so that then I can add people to my list that are interested in the nutrition nutrition piece because Samantha just taught us that there's two different calendars, right? There's calendars for pregnant people or calendars for more of a low impact. There's calendars where people can break it up if they don't have a full 40 minutes to an hour. Um, and I'm going to let the cat out of the bag the week of the seventh where I'm going to actually start naming the program. Whereas leading up to it, I've been breadcrumbing, but now I'm going to be like, okay, we've got 30 days in October that we're going to run and we're going to run a 5k together on whatever date. I don't know if it's Halloween. I don't know if it's November 1st. I don't know what it is, but we'll figure that out. And then I'm going to start inviting for those two weeks specifically to my challenge group, which will start off, as I just said, the week of the 25th as a like holding tank as a like, you know, generate excitement, a like little sneak peek, if you will. And then the week of the 21st, the weekend of the 21st, I will do my final inviting and um, start adding value into that group um, and then have my list ready for the fifth when all of the links start to go out to people so I know exactly what it is that they want. Questions? I love it. Okay, thanks for some <laughs> feedback. Cool. All right, so if there's no questions on that, I'm gonna go back to the presentation and let you kind of throw some ideas out there on more breadcrumbing ideas uh, for people to start to get excited about how they can um, get the wheels turning. And then I'm gonna call on Pam Pritchard because she had a really cool idea too. So mine, I think Tracy uh, did a really good job and she always has some awesome ones. So. Um, I'm going to be stealing some of hers, but some basics, sneakers, you could do a cool picture of your laces or even be like, do you ever change your laces to have fun colors and like picture of a foam roller, weights, taking pictures of your different routes. Um, the Christina Delgado pictures just gave me a ton of different ideas too. So that's awesome. Um, talking about the two different nutrition programs, like Tracy said, and even like what do you admire about runners? Like, like I said, for me, I'm always like the mental grit that runners have blows my mind. And so I have this goal, bucket list goal in 2021 to be running a half marathon at ideally at Disney World. Who knows if that happens? But um, that's my goal. So I'm talking a lot about that. And then also like you could like what type, there's so many cool like virtual runs out there, like the color run, the tough mutter, glow runs, like 
like Tracy said, we could do a Halloween run where we all put on a costume and just talking about different things like that. So um, here are just some rate, the RPE, the rate of perceived exertion. Thank you. I think it was Alicia who put that out there. Um, you could talk about that. And how does that like improve week to week and whatnot? So um, those were just a few ideas. I love it. I think what's, what's so exciting about this type of program and the stuff that Beachbody is starting to really spend time thinking about is that it's giving us access to new audiences, right? People that are like, oh, I'm a runner, I'm good. Well, there's a lot of runners that have significant weight to lose because their nutrition is terrible, right? There's a lot of runners who don't have a cross-training solution or their cross-training solution was a gym that's now shut down or that they don't feel comfortable going back to. So it's really gonna give you an opportunity to talk to a lot of people. The rate of perceived exertion, the reason I put that out there is because the same term was used in the test group that I was in, which I don't think we need a formal call for, but at some point in the next week, I'm gonna do a training on that too. It's the, it's the bar pre and postnatal program. It's not its own launch, but it is free for your um, customers. And so a couple of us are gonna be doing a Labor Day, get it? Labor Day, um, like mom's group, that if you have any pregnant customers, like I want you to know what you're talking about for this particular program. And that it's all about your own perceived exertion. It's just like at an Orange Theory, if you guys have been to where you're running and you're on whatever ever level makes you like not be able to have a conversation with the person next to you. That is whatever that level is for someone like Rhonda that runs all the time versus someone like me that is just getting back into running, like clearly our exertion levels are gonna be different. So um, I'm, I'm so fired up about this for a thousand reasons. I love the idea of the 5K. There are so many things you can do. Like the Halloween one, I'm like, yes, please. Like I didn't think about that, but how cool would that be to run? And, and like, how fun is that to show a picture of everyone? And you know, I'm, I'm excited about we might, so, we might have to just do a team Halloween run because I don't know yes. I don't want to run November 1st like I like to have fun on Halloween you know what I mean <laughs> I want to do a 5k the day after yeah, Halloween is on Halloween's on a Saturday this year so awesome. even more fun <laughs> even right. more partying that's right that's right I was, um, I was is that Amanda trying to talk again <laughs> Amanda, maybe you should type because it's like when you talk, it's like in super slow motion and we all just keep cracking up, but we miss hearing your voice. <laughs> I do think another thing that you can also focus on though is the strength training portion of this a lot too, because I do think there's a lot of runners out there who don't focus on that. And so really, like I said, focusing on like strengthening your ankles in the foam rolling and functional training piece. Like I'm going to dive into a lot of that. Um, just on research side, so I can speak to it more intelligently. But like that, I think is really, really huge, um, and could be cool to highlight as well. Yeah, I and add on to that, I am a, a runner and like endurance athlete, and so I'm thinking of like all of the ways, and all of my friends are like runners, so they're not trying to do a 5K, but like PRing. Um, or to be able to like, um, just the fun of races. Like I definitely miss that. Um, like my running teams have been get so awesome ideas. Um, but one thing that's like definitely a good thing to emphasize, um, is yeah, a lot of runners, we don't like to do strength training, but it also prevents injury and injury is like literally the least favorite thing. It's like a curse word in the running community and it happens all the time, but strength training and cross training are definitely the things. It's like our medicine, like it's what you need. And yeah, like countless times I'm like, if I get injured, I'm like, you know what? I haven't been doing my strength training. So yeah, just definitely wanted to echo that that's a really good thing to bring up. Love that. And then Elise asked a question about the nutrition with breakaway. So same thing, like you follow a certain whichever plan you're on. Um, I do think since you're going to be exercising most likely for an hour versus your typical 30 minutes in some programs, I would just take that into account from a calorie standpoint and maybe eat a little bit more. Um, but that's not anything specific that they're telling you to do. Um, she does recommend not drinking any alcohol during it because it really dehydrates you. I drank a glass of wine the other day and went for a run and I was, it was hard, but I did it. So don't have to completely not do that either. Um, and then in regards to like drinking energized before she usually suggests drink half of it 
right before your strength training program and then the other half right before you're about to go on the run. And the other thing I was thinking too, in terms of like marketing it, I feel like for those of us in the Northeast, October is like the last like usually nice month before the temperature starts dropping like crazy. And in this like COVID world we are in, like I feel like people are also might be dying to get outside for that last like month before we're all potentially stuck inside again. Um, but that's just another thing too I was thinking about. Um, I know some people might have nice weather all year long, but I think a lot of us are Northeast. So ju just another thought I was thinking about. Yeah. Just to piggyback off of that really quick, here in the Northeast in October, I think it's like end of October, we have the New York City Marathon. And I don't know, like in other it's major crazy, cities, like in Boston and other places, I don't know about here. I don't know what the official word is, but they're probably going to cancel it because of COVID. So this could be a good way to like get people engaged as well to say, hey, we're still doing a race. Love that. Pam, share your idea. I'm going to unmute you. Okay. Whoops. Unmute. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Well, so my idea was kind of coming out of, I don't want him to hear me. I was thinking about how I could get my husband to work out right. and cause he didn't, he didn't like lift four. And I was thinking to myself, well, he likes to run. Maybe he would, I'm like, Oh my God, we should do a couples challenge group where we kind of pit the couples together because the husband or boyfriends or significant others are working from home. Mine actually isn't. I think Tracy and I are the only two that have spouses that don't stay home now, but um, everybody's home. You can do your workout in the morning. Your spouse or couple partner could do it in the night. You guys could compare. You could go on the run together. You could split up. Um, I just think it'd be really cool. We could have like contests in the challenge group. Um, and it's a way to get the other person involved and potentially get to customers. Yeah. I love that. And you, you, you have a couple of customers that are like a dual package. So I think you already attract that type. I go <laughs> you, do. you do. That's awesome. I love that idea. It's a good way for, for, you know, a lot of women, I, I, I don't know. I know a lot of women who would love their husbands to do something with them. And right. so I totally agree with you. This is another good way. And I think Christina and her husband do a lot of pictures of the two of them running. So you could ask Duncan to just start off being one of your props. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Um, okay. Any other thoughts or ideas? Any questions about the timeline? Um, I will put this PowerPoint in with the recording so you guys have it. Um, but you guys, part of your power hour every single week should be sitting down and planning out your week. And I know that feels overwhelming. Like, what do I do? It's, it's making a list of people that have been responding to your stories and your uh, posts going through your memory jogger, making a list of people that you need to follow up with, having an ongoing list of people that you want to coach with you. My launches are definitely how I get a bunch of people excited and sign them up as coaches right off the bat. And I think um, I had 13 coaches that signed up with my first business center. And out of those 13, four of them have started some form of coaching whether that's just like, hey, my boss wants to sign up or I want to do this as a hobby or, hey, let's try to make a big impact. And there's others, I think, that are coming down the pipeline that are going to get a little bit more courageous as they start to get more results with MBF. Um, but a launch is a great way to show people like the relevance and the importance and the beauty of this community right? It's, it's like, we all love things about coaching, but I think if you pulled every single one of us, one, number one or number two would be the community of people that we get to be with. And that's what launches help people see is how important and exciting it can be when you're constantly being surrounded by other like goal seeking women and men who want to make themselves better. And that just gets people excited and fired up. So you've also got to be brave in the midst of planning out your week and figuring out when you're doing your poll and when you're showing your shoelaces and when you're doing all these things with these fun running pictures, when are you going to be asking people to join you to coach? Because you want to be definitely doing two posts a week on your newsfeed 
as well as talking about it in your stories like, hey, coach with me, help run a team with me, grab five of your best friends or five of your people that you know would love to run and bring them along with you and I will help you. And you provide the framework and the challenge group for the person, take that off their plate so they can just coach their people on the side and not have to be stressed about like, well, how do I do posts in a challenge group? That was hands down one of the things I was most stressed about, about running a challenge group was like, how am I gonna come up with content every day? How am I gonna do this? And now like, it's like, well, duh, you partner with a bunch of people and you share the workload, right? And that also makes it more fun. But when you're sitting down to plan out your week, it's like, what are my posts going to be? What are the themes going to be? How can I get engagement? Where is my list? And when can I talk about this opportunity and this business? And how can I keep fueling my mind uh, with positivity so that you get your people excited and inspired as you keep posting? Okay gonna be exciting. All right, guys, good luck to all of you who are about ready to start MBFA. I know a couple of you just started MBF, so have fun with it. Enjoy those weighted cordless jump ropes. Um, get yourselves on a meal plan. Get yourselves doing all the things that are gonna get you in the right place to be prepared for this launch. Samantha, I agree with Juliet, you killed it. It was awesome. Thank you for taking the floor. So proud of you. And I can't wait for Melissa and Trish next, uh, I guess in the next like six weeks to roll out the next December, autumn, nine week control freak. So that's gonna be awesome too. All right, you guys, have a good one. Good night. Bye. Bye.